the Joe Rogan experience. You know, I'm the one that would break into Joe Rogan's house and steal one shoe. You ever do that to somebody? You take no. an ounce of coke and you steal one shoe. It's horrible. And oh, that's horrible. And then, then you steal that one favorite pair of shoe. You take one shoe and you throw it away. That destroys people psychologically. For years, they'll keep looking for that one shoe. What happened? And then every time you see him, you you ever find that shoe? No, I fucking searched everywhere. It's rude as fuck. Oh yeah, I'm the fucking dirtiest bastard. I I know how to fucking flip flop you. So these guys get you in the inter interview. They get me room. into the interview room and they ask me what's going on and I'm talking to them. I go, I don't know what happened. The guy showed up. The guy pulled the gun. Next thing you know, I was home. And they're like, so what happened to the guy with the machine gun? I don't know. Did you know him? I don't know. You know, so how did you get there? I had a bike, but you just said you drove. Yeah, I drove to get the bike. To, I was just fucking with them because I wanted to get out because Don Johnson was marrying Sheila Easton on Miami Vice that night. I had to be home by <laughs> nine. That's all I cared about was this wedding. So I'm fucking with the cops. I'm like, I'm just going to go in there and talk to them, tell them the truth that, yeah, I, I went over there. They were selling drugs and I left. I had nothing to do. What kidnapping? What are you talking about? So we went back and forth for like six hours. And I still remember them sitting there like with their hands down and me talking about like, you know, my uncle came from Cuba in 1952 and he worked for fucking this guy. And they're like, what's this got to do with what we're talking about? Dog, I tormented them. And then I agreed to give the guy information. And I would just give him like red bands driver's hey, plate. That's what I this swear is to God, pre -internet. I would give him Jamie's license plate. Okay. Jamie's not a drug dealer, but I would tell him that Jamie was running kilos internationally from Europe. They Damn. would fucking, they would go through Jamie's life. Imagine if Jamie was doing that. And then they wouldn't find nothing. So they would figure out the fucking Jamie. I was playing them. I was just giving them fake license plates. How long did you do this for? Six months. They thought they would leave. The real, this is guy. I'm telling you, he runs big coke from Colombia. He knows the Ochoa brothers. No, yeah. So you were just making up this crazy narrative of feeding oh, it to these yokels. I was tormenting these two cops, <laughs> but the one cop wasn't going for it. He didn't like me personally, and, oh, I, of and I let him know that I didn't like him personally. It's a movie. It was a. Fu <laughs> I let him know that I hated him more than what he hated fucking me. <sighs> Oh. That's what I did. I let him know that I hate him more. And every time we went to court, he would sit there across from me. But I had a good attorney, and it was burning him up because he wanted me for kidnapping. But I'm like, nah, dog, you didn't find no fingerprints on nothing. Sorry, Charlie, not this time. You are uh, a man who has done one of the most difficult things a person could do. You lost a ton of weight. Yeah, and then maintain keeping yes. it off. That's the harder. Right, that's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah, the momentum of losing the weight is f good, but most people, they get to a point and they want to take a break. Mm -hmm. And then once they take a break, then it all slides. Yeah, it's a bit of both. Sometimes I want to take a break, but then I want to get to that next level. So mm -hmm. then next I level. get back on it. Well, we were talking about Gucci Mane before the, we started the podcast. Gucci is the guy who's done that. Yes. He's maintained and looks fucking amazing. And took it to he the next level. He was a big fella yeah. at one point in time when he had Burr tattooed on his face. Mm -hmm. you know, the ice the, cream cone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now he's shredded. Yeah. I mean, he got rid amazing. of that ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were saying it was the lean, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Drinking. Yeah, the codeine will put yeah. a lot Look of weight on you. Look at the difference, man. That is crazy. Well, he wasn't too fat in the other one. Yeah, that's, that's like, yeah, that's like, kind of like him mid losing weight in that one you can find some real chunky pics of, yeah. Yeah, of him yeah he got thick yeah he's now he's shredded yeah he's shredded my inspiration yeah me and my wife all the time we look at him and his wife the pictures they take what they do and i'm like i'm gonna head go. in that direction what do you do for working out i have my trainer about three days a week um sometimes two days a week and then on top of that and we'll do you know just Different circuits, back, chest, you know, whatever, whatever, legs. And then um, and then the other days, I'm always just trying to make sure I hit the treadmill twice a day for two miles on an Twice incline. a day? Yeah, yeah. Really? You do it twice a day? Yeah, in the morning and night. I don't do much otherwise. So, you know, all, especially now, a lot of my stuff is sitting in front of a computer, mm -hmm. podcasting, playing games on Twitch and stuff like that. So I feel like, oh, if I'm going to sit all, that long, I got to start the day, treadmill, end the day, treadmill. That's discipline. I like that. 
It is. I fucking hate it. So <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is discipline. But you like the results. Yeah. I yeah. like how I feel. I like the compliments. You know, I was just doing this thing the other day and um, uh, Jake Johnson, the guy from New Girl, I'm in a cartoon with him. And like, that's like, you know, he's like a leading man, dream boaty guy. And he's looking at me. He's like, man, he's like, you're looking fucking good, man. You got your shit together. You look like you're about to lead your own show. And I mm-hmm. hear shit like that. And I'm like, OK, yeah, I better go get on that treadmill again. Yeah. Yeah, that helps, right? It really does. Yeah, the positive feedback and positive energy. That's one thing that I like about what you do. You are very positive. Like, you're you're very warm and friendly. Like, all the shit that you do online, you're all smiley and positive <laughs> and friendly. It's cool. It's it's got, It gives off a good vibe. Like, when I look at your Instagram posts or I read something that you post, it's mm-hmm. like, Ron is on the good path. People have a very poor judge of character. She doesn't seem nice. It seems forced. Mm. People that are like that all the time, it she doesn't seem nice. It's very forced. Mm. And whatever, you're allowed to be a bitch, right? You're allowed to be a bitch. You're allowed to be nasty to people. You're accomplished. You're a comedian. You did the whole thing. What you're not allowed to do um, is have a Guantanamo Bay situation in the backstage. <laughs> Of your show, where everybody's walking around afraid for their life, <laughs> and it's like Abu Ghraib, where they're hooked up to wires, and they dogs have like, around them. yeah, she's got dogs and hoods. If an intern's late, they have a hood on. I don't support that. Mm, That's just me. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I you wish she's done. Best. She's around for too long. James Talent, Corden. all these people, walk away. You've been famous forever. Walk away. Like, eventually, everybody, they're just going to figure it out. Now, Fallon's on an apology door because apology tour because of the blackface. Like, is he? Well, he was. Like, he had to go around and apologize a million times for. Like, they're going to find the thing mm. if you don't go away. You mm. got it. You got to have a good run, and then when you have a good run, you step back and you go, okay, I'm still going to do my thing, but like. I'm not. I mean, there's only a, a few jobs in entertainment, right? Right. So I think a lot of the cancel culture shit is probably these motherfuckers want those jobs. Ooh. They're like, how long is this bitch gonna be dancing? I can dance with Hillary Clinton. What? I could do the Charleston with Henry Kissinger, whatever the fuck she does out there. The Charleston is that she, what it is? She 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 goes out there to the Charleston. She's got war criminals. <laughs> her and Bush are jumping around. I That's mean, right? She was buddies with Bush. That yeah, was like she's one of the a first CIA things. agent. <gasps> Stephen Paddock. And do not ask me for sources. But <laughs> Stephen Stephen Paddock. Who's that? He was the guy that shot up the Vegas concert. That was a very tr- oh. tragic thing. Listen to this. The only guy that saw Stephen Paddock alive, his name is Jesus Campos. He was a guard at Mandalay Bay. He got interviewed nowhere else. Do you know where he got interviewed in the beginning? Ellen. Ellen. Really? Weird. And then they went on. If you could find that clip... They went on with a weird, like, diagram of how it happened, and Ellen's, like, showing the people how it happened. Not, like, an emotional, like, how are you feeling? How are you holding up? It was a weird diagram of, like, and then he went to the left and to the right. It was very strange to, look, what the hell's going on? This is so, a daytime show. Which is the paddock guy? And bo- There's two guys there? The chubbier guy is the Jesus guy. And now Ellen is doing a doc- thing of, of how the shooting happened. Look at how she's got like an antenna from someone's yeah. Buick that she's popped <laughs> off and she's using it as a pointer. But <laughs> why the hell is this happening on like a daytime show where, where she did? This is weird. Where'd she get that pointer? I, I don't know. know. She, stole don't... It off. she stole it off an intern's car. Why wouldn't you just use your finger? Like, if that was you, if it was your show, the yeah. Tim Dillon show, yeah. wouldn't you just point? Yeah. All, yeah. Yeah, this is also a giant uh, screen behind her, so they could have just put it on that screen. So, But oh, she's using screen. this thing. I find it very strange. I don't know why. Wait a minute. Those aren't real palm trees? No. Yeah. <laughs> <not. real. laughs> I know that street, though. I know that block at Beverly Hills that she used. Oh, Hi. look at it. You fired up the vape? Is yeah. it the vape? I brought two so you brought jewels. cigarettes, two jewels, and camels. Coffee and a smoothie. Dude. I wasn't sure what to expect. What would you what what was your worst case scenario? Oh my god, worst case scenario, I poop my pants right off the bat. Oh, have you done that before? Like when you get nervous? Not when I get nervous, but I used to well, only once in college. You pooped your pants? Yeah, I Were was you drinking? Yeah, I was hungover. I ate Chipotle. I ate Chipotle pretty much every day in college. That's uh not good for it your brain. It was not good at all. Trying to learn. Yeah. Actually Chipotle, like those bowls, they are pretty good. They're like, so good. Like if you get like one of those steak bowls with rice, like that's about as clean as you can eat. Yeah. Really. And in college it was nice because you could eat like half of a bowl and be like super full and then eat the other half later and you can do the tricks of getting half steak, half chicken or something. That's that a way trick? they give you more. Oh, is that a trick? I don't kind think it of. is a trick. I think it's they have like a, a scooper. They have a scooper, but if you say you want half this and half that, they're not going to put half in the scooper. They're putting a full scooper in there. And then you're getting a full pooper on the couch in college. Mm. Yeah. 
Sorry to hear about the poop in the pants. It's all right. People are very embarrassed about that, but it does happen if you take chances. I feel like it happens to every. Everyone has a poop <laughs> story, I hope. If you don't, I feel like you're just not taking enough chances with your diet. No, and it's like, I think everyone's poop story starts out with them being like, oh, I thought I was going to fart. Mm-hmm. And then it was of not course. a fart. Yeah, that's in the car, that's when it happens. I was yeah. honestly on the drive up here, I... Uh-oh. I had a little bit of gas, and I was like, just wait until you're there, hold it, because you don't want to take any risks right now. Mm. Yeah. So I, you know, it actually worked out. I, I let it out. I've had a pod, there was a podcast once where I legitimately thought, do you remember who it was? I legitimately thought I was going to shit my pants. I was like pinching my my abs down. I was like crunching myself. I was like, listen, if I don't get out of here right now, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I Do you remember who it was? But. I might even set it on the air. Yeah, I remember it happening, but I don't remember who was in the room. I though. barely got out. It's barely kind of a nice out. feeling, though. I like that, like, adrenaline rush of, like, <laughs> I need to hold. Like, it really tests my skills. Like cramming for a test. Yeah. Like, you, like oh, my God, there's not much time left. Yeah, I, I dropped out of college, so, like, I feel like me trying to hold in a poop is the most cramming for a test I feel like I do. Why? Th- that is a psychological thing, the cramming thing. They, they say that some people like procrastinate until they know they just, they have to, t- like, okay, I'm going to stay up all night. I'm a procrastinator. Yeah. <laughs>